Greetings YouTubers and followers of my channel this old blade this old blade this old sword blade reviews I guess I'm a old blade as well as an old sword of some sort well um, got another six leaf knife review for you this is the SL-09 I previously did the SL-08 and uh, I'm going to see if I can summon that one up and have it handy so we can do a comparison with that as well. But this is a, another Harvey Lynn rattlesnake design knife. And uh, this one's black G10. It is the only version I see being carried by White Mountain Knives where this was $48.99. And if you knock uh, about five bucks off with the old sword discount code, you can drop that down a bit more. So you got around a $44 knife or so. Somewhere in that vicinity. Yeah, free shipping, tax included, or no tax actually. Uh, let's hope that lasts. <laughs> anyway, uh, this is an interesting one. Because of the blade shape, um, kind of leaning towards a tanto, but without the secondary point, more of a pronounced belly. And interesting with this knife is the Scandi grind. So a short grind, uh, kind of like uh, you know a bush knife sort of a thing. Scandi grind that we see on uh, some of the Finnish knives from Finland. Anyway, a um, lot of milling on the G10 on this handle. And by the way, all these six leaf knives I've run across are D2. That may turn you off right away, but there you go. SL09 D2, and there's the rattlesnake. And the man behind that rattlesnake is Harvey Lynn, a uh, well known designer. Very interesting designer, turning out some uh, cool stuff. So it's a liner lock. Exposed liners, short back spacer, uh, slotted hole for lanyard, relieved uh, liner unlock, pretty good action. Can we fail it? Yes, but it takes a little trying. Well, maybe not too much trying. I would call it a pretty stiff detent. I mean, it's not soft. It doesn't shake out. You're not going to shake that guy out at all. Deep carry clip. Again, these clips are all like clones of what I see on a lot of the G10 Tucson models. So are we seeing these coming from the same OEM? I don't know. They do have the uh, dome-headed screws, which I'm not a big fan of, but you've got a pretty high rise on the clip there, so seem to work okay in and out of my jeans pockets. Kind of a long center trough there in the milling with um, pretty good grippy stuff uh, for the, uh, the up and down milling there, whatever you want to call that vertical milling depending on how you're holding the knife got a G10 backspacer and uh, just about the right size flipper tab that is jimped so you can light switch that guy pretty easily now uh, Harvey likes to put these little features into the blade that are actually usable and that one is too so you've got a good sharp shoulder on that and um, I can't do it slowly but I can I did flick it out didn't I yeah a moment ago <laughs> let me try it from the other side with the middle finger can we do that just about don't want to shed any blood on uh, camera here yeah a little little difficult for the middle finger flick but 
Yeah. If you take your thumb and push it forward that way, not out this way, but push it right along the handle, no problem. And um, closes pretty smoothly. Knife, as far as I know, is on bearings. Got a single stop pin in the front. And uh, let's take a look at measurements, as we often do. So the total length from tip to pommel is, uh, we're going to call that 8.3. We've got a blade of, um, I'm going to call that uh, 365, 3 3.65, and a cutting edge about the same. And since I'm set to inches, let's do the handle. 0.67, not exactly real thin, but, uh, you know, doesn't feel humongous. And a 3.9 millimeter blade stock with a thickness of, sorry, weight, not thickness. Always better to correct myself when I'm on camera than later on because then I gotta throw text in and you guys catch me and you have a lot of fun with that. Sometimes I do that on purpose. Who knows? Ounces 5.04, so right about five ounces. Call it 5.05, .05, rounding up. So that's the SL09. Here is the very well received, I was surprised in my review, SL08, a bigger knife, good deal bigger, but the SL09 is not a tiny knife by any means, but the SL08 is a big guy, it's about an inch longer overall. And we've got a blade, uh, if we even them up, the blade is... Um, Definitely right, coming right up on four inches, so it's a little bit longer depending on how you measure it. But uh, this guy glows in the dark and all that good kind of stuff. Does come in a red acrylic handle as well as a red and black acrylic handle. Excellent, pretty much close to drop shut action on that. Just as good an action on this one. You can hear a little bit of um, scraping of the uh, ball bearings on the pivot. Not bad, but probably a little uh, heavy KME or mid-weight KME. Not KME. KPL. I got my acronyms all messed up today. KPL, Knife Pivot Lube. Put a little bit of that in there or your favorite oil and uh, should be good to go. Good jimping with the ramp. And as I say, you got that little, call it a fuller there with a hole. I don't think the hole's necessary, but you've got a pretty good sharp shoulder there, which is what you need when they set the knives up this way. And of course, you know, you do your little adjustments on the pivot, and you can get it to be um, a little lighter if you want. Nice centered blade, pretty good uh, blade to handle ratio. And ergos are generally good. I mean, you feel it bite a little bit into your hand. It's not really hot, but it's grippy. I mean, this milling here on both sides of the center with that trough there, I mean, you've got a shoulder there and very grippy on both sides of that. So when you roll it into your palm, um, you know, it's definitely there to stay. It's not sliding on you. And you got a good stop there with the uh, the guard, also known as flipper tab. Nice little knife. I mean, if you like this kind of thing, you don't mind the D2. I mean, I keep saying this, but I'll say it again. I got a Microtech um, fixed blade knife from like 08, 2008, that's uh, in D2. I had asked the distributor, the uh, the online seller, to uh, send me the S30V model. 
he got things confused, sent me the D2, sent me a little rebate. But, I mean, there's Microtech, 2008, using D2. So, is it a bad steal? No. I think we've just heard the, heard the names, heard the numbers often enough that we want something different, even if we don't put it to the test. So, D2 is a good serviceable steel. It's semi-stainless. So, uh, put a little coat of uh, mineral oil or vegetable oil or what have you uh, on the blade. Vegetable oil, if you're using it for food prep. Uh, mineral oil is probably not bad. But I just wouldn't use like WD-40 or anything if you're prepping food with it. But probably mineral oil is the way to go. Or uh, a silicone cloth, what have you. You know, you decide. And uh, I remember back when guns were blued, they weren't all stainless. So... <laughs> you know, you got to wipe your gun down. Otherwise, you'd get uh, rusty fingerprints on it. Um, just the way it goes, it's all about maintenance. And uh, D2 is a good, tough tool steel. Uh, look up the steel on knife steel compositions, and you'll get some good background on it, the composition, so on and so forth. Are there better steels out there? Yeah, there's a lot of good stainless steels out there. Of course, there's M390, there's uh, CPM uh, 20CV, there's uh, S90V, there's even um, Sandvik, 14C, 28N, etc., VG10. So a lot of steels out there to choose from, but you know, until you really put them to the test and sharpen them repeatedly and use them, you don't really know what you got. So I'll leave it at that, off my soapbox and uh, let me know what you think. Well, before we do, let me just stand it up next to the Griptilian so you guys have a size there. Bigger than a Griptilian by a little bit. And um, certainly the Rat 1 is about an inch longer overall. Not that much, though. Okay, folks. Hope you enjoyed the review. Don't forget to give it a like and keep on coming back and subscribe. Got more great content for you coming up. Be well.